Okay, so let's talk about bond enthalpies. And along with that, we're going to have an enthalpy or delta H review. Okay, so as we learned in Chem 111, enthalpy is a state function. And so that means that we can determine delta H's from any given path. We can use the initial state and the final state, and we can find the change in enthalpy for the whole reaction. Okay? Now, if you forgot, then go to Chapter 5 in your text for a small refresher, because we are going to use this now and later on in, the, in our thermo chapter. So Hess's Law, delta H's can be determined by delta H's from an alternate path. All right, so one of the applications of Hess's Law, we can use delta HF values, so those are heats of formation, for reactants and products in a chemical reaction to calculate delta H reaction. Okay, so we can calculate delta H reaction use, using these delta HFs. And the way that we do that is that we sum up the delta HF values for the products and we subtract the summed delta HF values for the reactants. And then we can get the delta H or the change in enthalpy for the reaction. Okay, so another way that we didn't talk about last semester is using bond enthalpies. These are actually average bond enthalpies. And it's a very similar process in that we're going to use the, we're going to sum up the, all of the bond enthalpies for the bonds broken, and we're going to subtract off all of the bond enthalpies for the bonds formed. Now, in order to do this, we need to draw the Lewis structures for all of the molecules in the reaction. If you don't do that, you will probably get the wrong answer, okay? So, on the next slide, there's a table with uh, um, example bond enthalpies, okay? So, remember, these are average bond enthalpies. The exact bond enthalpy is going to depend on the actual chemical environment of each atom in the molecule, okay? But basically, it takes 436 kilojoules per mole to break a hydrogen-hydrogen bond. It only takes 242 kilojoules per mole to break a chlorine-chlorine bond. All right? You can see some of the others here. Now, see these down here, a carbon-oxygen, carbon-hydrogen, and a carbon-carbon bond, okay? And the values that go along there. We're going to be using a lot of those in calculations. Okay, so we kind of already said this, but so it takes 436 kilojoules to break a mole of hydrogen-hydrogen bonds, okay? So it's definitely the amount that it takes to break a whole mole of them, all right? That's going to become important when we calculate reaction enthalpies based on bond enthalpies. Okay, now when we break bonds, we're always going to have to put energy in. Okay, so bond breaking is always going to be positive. All right, remember, energy is released when it's negative. When it's positive, it's absorbed. Okay, and positive delta H is called endothermic, an endothermic reaction. So bond breaking is always endothermic. Okay, now bond making, all right, that's always going to be exothermic. Energy is always released when a bond is formed, okay? So bond making is always exothermic, all right? It always releases energy. The molecule becomes more stable, releases energy when we make a bond. All right, so how do we calculate this, okay? We can calculate delta H reaction from bond enthalpies. And if necessary, sometimes the problem will be given in words, but we are going to write a chemical reaction equation for the given reaction. Sometimes that will just be given to you. All right, the next thing we're going to do is draw Lewis structures for each molecule in the reaction, okay, both reactants and products. Then we're going to break all of the bonds in the reactants, okay? So we're going to break all those bonds, and we're going to add them all up. So we're going to calculate delta H for all of the bonds in the bond breaking process, okay? Now we're going to, we have to make sure to account for the number of each bond type broken in a given molecule. And we also want to look at the stoichiometric coefficients because like let's say a molecule has a two, has a two in front of it, that means there's two moles of it. So whatever we calculate for that molecule in terms of bonds broken, we're going to have to double it. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is form all of the bonds in the products. Okay, so this is the bond formation. 
And when we do that, we are going to add up all of the delta H's for the bond formation. So all the bonds that we make, we're going to add up all the bond enthalpies for those. Okay, and again, make sure that you take into account the stoichiometric coefficients. Okay, by the way, this word should be formed, not broken. Okay, so again, be sure to account for the number of each bond type formed and the stoichiometric coefficients. All right, and then we're going to calculate delta H reaction for the reaction by subtracting the delta H for the bonds broken minus the bonds formed. So it's always going to be bonds broken, which is going to be positive, minus, and then this bonds formed, it's going to be another positive number, but this negative sign takes into account that energy is released when we make those bonds. Okay, so it's always going to be bonds broken in the reactant, reactants minus bonds formed in the products. Okay, so here's an example. So let's use bond enthalpies to calculate delta H reaction. Okay, so first thing you want to do is draw your Lewis structures and then also take note of this table and find all the different kinds of bonds. So we're going to have carbon-hydrogen bonds, okay, so there's that. We're going to have oxygen-oxygen bonds, okay. We are going to have carbon-oxygen double bonds, all right. I'm not finding these easily, but all right. Oh, yeah, here's O2, by the way, okay. So there's O2, and then the carbon-oxygen double bonds. See it down here. Hydrogen, oxygen, single bonds. Okay. Let's see if we can find that guy. There we are. Okay. So, anyway, just make sure that you find all of them. Don't forget, there's a carbon carbon single bond in here. Okay. All right. So, let's draw the Lewis structures. All right. So, here they are. Um, we were just given the bond enthalpy for O2, so we didn't have to draw it, but everything else is drawn. All right, so here's the plan. All right, so let's break all of the bonds. So we're going to end up breaking 12 carbon hydrogen bonds, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six times two because of the stoichiometric coefficient. And we're going to break two carbon carbon bonds. See, there's one in this molecule, but we have a stoichiometric coefficient of two. And then we are going to break seven moles worth of O2 bonds, okay? And that's going to give us some nice big positive number. All right. Now we're going to form eight carbon oxygen double bonds. Okay. So two of them in each molecule times the stoichiometric coefficient. There are eight of them. And 12 oxygen hydrogen bonds, one, two in each molecule times six with the stoichiometric coefficient. Okay, so then we're going to solve using the data in the table and the equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. Okay, so here's our equation, bonds broken minus bonds formed. Now the two numbers we calculate here are both going to be positive, but again, this minus sign takes into account that this energy is released when we make those bonds. So here's our entire equation. There's the 12 carbon hydrogen bonds, the two carbon carbon bonds, and the seven oxygen molecules. So those are all bonds broken, okay, in the reactants. And then here are the eight carbon uh, oxygen double bonds and the 12 oxygen hydrogen single bonds, and these are all bonds formed in the products, all right? Then we're going to fill in the values, okay, you can see them here using the values in the table. And then we're going to take our bonds broken minus our bonds formed, and we're going to see that we're going to release negative 2,831 kilojoules worth of energy when we run this reaction. Okay, and then if you wanted to, you could check this estimate with the value 2856, so negative 2,856 kilojoules uh, that is calculated from thermochemical data like delta HFs basically, and you get a, a really good agreement. But the difference comes in because these are actual, actually average bond enthalpies. So this is experimentally determined thermochemical data, 
All right, and then this is an estimate based on average bond enthalpies.